Hey everybody, it's uh, Dr. Falcone. How you doing everybody? It's a great day here in uh, the DC area. It's uh, a little after two o'clock and wanted to talk a little bit about supplements. Uh, I know that there's a lot of questions about them and how they're used and used appropriately. So I thought I'd just spend a few minutes talking about them. Um, and I was going to, uh, waiting for everybody to get on. I hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. Uh, we got a chance to see some fireworks. Uh, don't tell anybody we actually set off some fireworks at our own house, uh, which I don't know if that's quite legal in Maryland, but, uh, we had a good time. Uh, we also went out to, uh, late last week to see some fireworks with our grandkids. Um, one of them who loved it and one of them who was terrified of them. <laughs> so, uh, but that is part of life, right? So we'll get started in just a minute and talk a little bit about uh, supplements. Uh, so uh, hang on, we're telling your followers. Excellent. All righty. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about uh, supplements and how they're used and used appropriately. And in some uh, cases, I wanted to talk about things that you need to worry about uh, for people that uh, are using supplements. There's really two schools of thought on supplements. The first school of thought is um, that because of how we grow food and how we um, deliver uh, food to um, across many, many uh, thousands of miles in some cases, it loses such nutritional value that it's important for us to supplement uh, ourselves with uh, certain uh, micronutrients to make sure that we're getting enough of the essential vitamins and minerals. And essential vitamins and minerals are really those things which your body can't produce naturally. You have to consume them uh, through your food sources. So in a, as we all know, our food system has changed over years uh, and that has led to what we think are deficiencies in micronutrients. So some people uh, uh, say that, look, we really should be cognizant of this and take a lot of supplements to be able to fill the gaps, so to speak. In some cases, people spend upwards of, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month taking supplements. That's kind of one school of thought. The other school of thought is that uh, supplements are a waste of time, um, that there's no good uh, evidence on supplements, that they're unregulated, and most of what you consume goes out in your urine. You pee it out uh, because your body can't use it. So that's the other polar extreme. As is true of most things in life, uh, we have to take a little bit more um, thoughtful and nuanced approach to supplements. So what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about supplements, how they're regulated, uh, things that you need to think about when you take supplements, uh, certain uh, people that should really be taking supplements and how we determine that. And then I was going to give you some specific examples in my practice of people that uh, we've actually tested for, and we'll talk a little bit about that and, and kind of what we determined to be the case. So, um, and then finally, we'll kind of wrap up by saying where you can find good supplements. Uh, and there's a lot of different places. Uh, and I'll give you a hint that Amazon may not be the place where you want to get all your supplements. Uh, but so let's talk a little bit about uh, supplements. So there's essential vitamins and minerals, right? Um, I'm not going to talk specifically right now about botanicals, which are uh, which are natural substances that occur in nature that have been purified, such as chamomile, ashwagandha, you know, there's literally hundreds of them that people can use uh, as botanicals. I'm going to st stick mostly with the vitamins and nutrients, uh, nutrients, uh, vitamins and minerals, sorry, um, nutrients. And that we'll, we'll talk about botanicals actually at another time because I think it's a fascinating topic. Um, so when you talk about uh, specifically vitamins and minerals, uh, what are the ones that we need to worry about and uh, what ones should we be taking? Taking a step back, are they regulated? Well, they actually are regulated. In 1994, there was the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act uh, that uh, basically established for the first time standards uh, for regulating dietary supplements. Dietary supplements are regulated as food as opposed to drugs, which are regulated as pharmaceuticals. Um, and there's different regulations for each one of those. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are lesser regulations for dietary supplements. They just follow a different path. 
and Deshea, as it's uh, commonly for, referred to in 1994, was really the first time the government established certain regulations around uh, that. That was um, the next step in the evolution of uh, regulation of dietary supplements came in 2008 uh, when there was legislation passed uh, and implemented into, into regulations that basically established supplements uh, need to follow what's called good manufacturing processes, which are GMPs. Uh, GMPs are very common uh, for any manufacturing process. Uh, basically that what's on the bottle is as they say is on the bottle, uh, that there's no, uh, there's no impurities in the bottle, that it's been tested, and that the, the whole supply chain follows what are called good manufacturing practices. In 2008, they were kind of codified in law and regulations that uh, all manufacturers had to follow that produce uh, supplements. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, there's outside organizations that kind of give the good housekeeping seal of approval uh, to supplements. Uh, one of the most common one is the U.S. Pharmacopeia, the USP, uh, which you sometimes will see stamped on the bottle or if you search different supplement companies, you will see it on their website. They're uh, certified by USP, the U.S. Pharmacopeia. Uh, the other one that I really like uh, is called Consumer Labs, uh, which is a really great website for consumers. Um, it has both a free version and one you pay for, where it gives kind of a breakdown of all the supplements, what are the best supplements to take based on purity and price. So they kind of balance that. And they tell you, hey, these are the, these are our recommended. It's an outside third party verification. They actually test all the supplements, make sure they are what they say they are, make sure there's no impurities, no no toxins, no heavy metals, those kind of things. Um, and they uh, you'll see sometimes on some of the supplement companies bottles or on their website, uh, Consumer Labs, the CL uh, seal of approval, and there are other ones. So I think that's the first thing you want you want to know. Number one, they are regulated. Supplement companies are regulated. They follow good manufacturing practices. And there's these outside third party organizations that kind of look at them and say they're they're following it or they're not following it. Um, so there's really good information out there. Um, so how many Americans? Let's focus on us in America. Take supplements. Well, uh, if you look at statistics through the CDC, they'll say over 50% of all Americans take a supplement. So of those 50%, uh, and that number uh, grows every decade that they do the surveys, um, they find that about 70% of people that take any kind of supplement take multivitamins, which would be expected. People are trying to kind of cover their bases. They want to take a general multivitamin that gives them a lot of different uh, my, uh, uh, vitamins and minerals and kind of make sure that they have that covered. Um, so that's very common. About 30% of people uh, are taking things like vitamin D, uh, vitamin C, calcium. So of the half of Americans that take supplements, about a third of them, 30% uh, of them are taking those kind of things. A growing number of people are taking fish oil supplementations for essential fatty acids, uh, DHA and EPA, uh, and they are very important for different functions in the body that we'll talk about in a moment. So those are, if you look at statistically who takes supplements, those are kind of the the, uh, the broad population that does it. So what are particular people that should take supplements? Like you should really think about taking certain supplements. Well, number one is as we get older and we're get, everyone's getting older every day, um, your body's ability to absorb micronutrients from their food for lots of different reasons kind of goes down over time. So it would be reasonable to consider taking a supplement or a general multivitamin if you're, if you're older or elderly. Uh, we know on the other end of the spectrum, people that are uh, women that are pregnant or lactating uh, because they're growing a new human or feeding a new human uh, need specific multivitamins, specifically folate, uh, iron, uh, zinc, and there's other ones that they get uh, in their supplements. And so they, uh, they get, uh, hey Mindy, they get um, supplemented normally as part of their prenatal vitamins. And folate, we know, is a critically important uh, B vitamin that is part of a lot of chemical reactions in your body that, um, that if you don't get enough of it, you're at higher risk as a woman. Uh, your child is at higher risk for ha having what's called neuro 
tube defects. That's basically your spinal cord and how all the structures close over it. Um, and it's a miracle that all the things that have to happen normally. We know that women that are deficient in folate um, have higher incidence of neural tube defects like spina bifida in their children. Um, now, the good news is we we supplement foods now with certain micronutrients like folate, um, and that has greatly reduced the incidence of spina bifida. And certainly that's why we recommend that, uh, that women take uh, that are uh, going to deliver or are, are going to become pregnant, uh, take some general multivitamin or thinking of becoming pregnant, really. So those are definitely two uh, particular patient populations that we want. To really think about taking multivitamins, which are old, are taking supplements, which are older uh, individuals, women uh, that are pregnant. There are certain uh, medications that we have to be careful about that um, can actually uh, impair the absorption of certain micronutrients and multivitamins. Uh, one of them most commonly is the, the so-called PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, that a lot of people take for acid reflux. Now, these drugs were designed to be used for very short periods of time, weeks or months. There are uh, patients uh, and individuals that have been on them for years, if not decades. Uh, and we know that PPIs can definitely affect the absorption of B12 and other micronutrients um, and definitely impact uh, long-term health because you need that high acid content to be able to break down some of the foods that you have. We know that um, one of the other things that we, we talk about, oh, I, I, uh, I want to make sure that uh, people know that uh, people that are vegan, uh, that have a plant-based diet, that take no animal proteins, uh, we also want to be concerned with B, uh, vitamin B12, uh, uh, vitamin D, um, and a lot of people that are vegan talk about vitamin B12 being able to get it from plant sources. There are certain uh, plant sources you can absolutely get vitamin B12 from. Um, the question is how bioactive it, it is in your body. Uh, you store vitamin B12 in your liver and you have a few years worth of reserve. If you're a long-term vegetarian, vitamin B12 is something you should definitely think about supplementing in addition to making sure that you have it in your diet. Um, there's other um, there's other people that we uh, worry about with B vitamins specifically, and B vitamins are important to so many chemical processes in the body. There are millions, if not billions, of chemical reactions that happen in your body at the cellular level, and the essential vitamins and, and nutrients, specifically the B vitamins, are really critically important for all of those to make sure your body is is really functioning opt optimally, make sure your mitochondria, your powerhouse of your cells are functioning, making sure all the different chemical reactions in your body are, are going along as they should, making sure you're able to detoxify certain substances that on a day-to-day -day basis get into your body. The B vitamins are critical across a lot of those different uh, different pathways. So we talk a lot about B vitamins and I will in my case examples talk about that. The other uh, group of individuals uh, that we need to worry about are people that are obese. B1 uh, is uh, thiamine, which is essential in a lot of your uh, nervous tissue uh, and how, the, how your nerves are uh, conducting uh, signals. Uh, we know that people that are obese actually need more B vitamins, specifically thiamine. And we know people that have had gastric bypass surgery need to take certain B vitamin supplementation. Um, so that's that's definitely a class that, that you know, we, we need to worry about. People that are uh, alcoholic, uh, people that drink more than normal also have thiamine or B1 deficiencies. So that's something that I dealt with all the time when I was in the emergency department. If someone came in that was an alcoholic, uh, or that drank a lot and they were dehydrated, we would typically supplement them uh, with what used to be called a banana bag because it looked yellow, but it had a multivitamins, magnesium, and B vitamins in it, as well as thiamine. Um, so it was it was definitely something that that we knew about and we know about can affect the body and affect cer certainly neurologic uh, functioning. Um, so we talked about people on proton pump inhibitors, people that take metformin for diabetes, uh, that's also can lower your B12 levels or your ability to absorb B12. So that's definitely something um, that you want to know about, um, as well as one of the most common medications that are out there nowadays are statins, uh, cholesterol lowering drugs. And there are millions of prescriptions written uh, on a yearly basis. And it's, a, it's one of the top three, I think, drugs that uh, pharmaceuticals that are prescribed. So people that take uh, statins, uh, those cholesterol-lowering drugs, 
we know that it affects the ability uh, for CoQ10, which is one of the cofactors uh, that is part of how your mitochondria produce energy for your cells. Uh, we know that the levels of CoQ10 can drop for people that are on statins. It's one of the theories as to why some people on statins can get muscle pain and muscle weakness because it's affecting those uh, that ability to, to process uh, through the mitochondria. Uh, but people that are on statins should definitely be taking um, some supplements using uh, CoQ10. So what are the typical supplements that I would um, that I look at thinking about prescribing uh, or actually prescribe to my patients? Um, and I think that um, there's a couple that routinely should be checked for just about any patient. One is vitamin D. Vitamin D is, uh, we've heard so much about it regarding, you know, COVID. People with low vitamin D levels have worse outcomes uh, if they get COVID and they're, and they're hospitalized. Uh, we know that if you tested for vitamin D, which your doctor can order that test through any of the standard labs that are out there, LabCorp or Quest, uh, we know that there are about 90 million Americans, which is about 25% of the population, that are vitamin D deficient. And what does that mean? That means that your level is though is below 20 nanograms per milliliter. That's how it's measured, um, and that's what's been established. When you talk about vitamin deficiencies and mineral deficiencies, you also talk about not only being deficient, but you talk about having an insufficient amount of it. So it's like in that gray zone. So it's not like a switch that you turn off and on, either you're deficient or you're not. It's, it's a gray zone, right? You can have a lower level of certain vitamins, so your body's not able to function as optimally as it should, and that you would benefit from some of that vitamin uh, or uh, mineral supplementation. So for B vitamins, I actually recommend uh, my patients are in the 50 to 70 range. And that I think is coming out more and more in the literature that, that if you're below 20, it's kind of a danger point. Uh, in 20 to 30, you're still insufficient. So you really need to be above that. And typically anybody that lives in what's called a northern latitudes, which is just about anybody above Florida that doesn't spend the majority of your time outside um, probably needs to have their vitamin D level checked, ideally in the winter months, because uh, that's when it's the lowest, and you should supplement it. And usually uh, what I recommend is based on the level, 1,000 to 2,000 uh, units a day uh, of vitamin D. Uh, you can take it as a single pill of five to 10,000 once a week, uh, and, and then you, 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 you've taken care of it. Definitely take it with food. It's a one of the fat soluble um, vitamins, so you need to actually take it with food so it's it's absorbed well. Uh, so that's vitamin D. Uh, the other one that I commonly uh, prescribe and certainly take myself, and I am actually vitamin D deficient, so I do take vitamin D, is magnesium. Magnesium is an amazing is an amazing mineral. It is. Uh, known to be active in over 350 biochemical processes in your body. It's, a, it's an essential part of, of these reactions that you have to have magnesium for your body to be able to do certain reactions at the cellular level. We know that magnesium, because of how uh, food is conventionally farmed, uh, is lower in the soil than it has been in the past. So that's one of the reasons that people talk about taking these supplements is just because the plants are not able to take up the level of nutrients because it just doesn't exist in the soil. And, you know, whether it's due to glyphosate and Roundup and all the uh, herbicides that we spray on, on our, our foods uh, or not, uh, we know that in general people are getting less nutritious food than they did in days past. And magnesium is clearly one of them. Uh, magnesium is important for so many things. It's important for neurologic function. Uh, it's important for brain health. It's important for people that have uh, any suspicion of asthma. They use magnesium. When I was in the hospital, we commonly used it uh, for, uh, for people that were severe, severe asthmatics because it, it relaxes your muscles. It's, uh, it's, it's a relaxant. And one of the most common areas it's used in the hospital is for women that come in with very high blood pressures. Uh, then they come in and they're at risk for what's called eclampsia, which is seizures if their blood pressure goes too high. They're commonly given grams and grams of magnesium to lower their blood pressure and relax those blood vessels. Um, it can be used in migraines and migraine headaches, been very effective uh, for people. Um, 
typical muscle cramps, body aches, those kind of things that people have, leg cramps. Um, that's one of the things we think about, could this be a magnesium deficiency? There's different forms of magnesium. There's actually seven or eight different varieties of magnesium that your body can use. Magnesium hydroxide is, uh, or magnesium oxide is actually one of the most common ones. And uh, people may think of that as milk of magnesia uh, or other things you take for constipation because taking too much magnesium can definitely cause you to have a little bit of loose stools and a little bit of uh, diarrhea. It's actually one of the things that we look at for people that are magnesium deficiency when we're giving magnesium is to get to the point of tolerance so that they don't start having really loose stools or diarrhea. There are forms of magnesium that will be less likely to cause it. Things like magnesium glycinate, uh, which is one of the things that I commonly uh, will prescribe to my patients. That's a form of magnesium that has less tendency uh, to cause it. Magnesium citrate is another form. Uh, there's a form called magnesium L3 innate that's actually been shown to cross the blood-brain barrier and we think is more effective uh, for people that have potentially have uh, uh, neurologic issues, dementia, using magnesium L3 innate as an integrative approach to, to folks that are at risk for that uh, is being studied. So there's lots and lots of reasons to take magnesium. I think it's, it's actually a great medicine for helping people sleep. I've had a patient that I put on magnesium uh, and she, within a few days of literally taking it, she said, I, my sleep is just so much better. So it's a great, uh, it's a great sleep adjuvant uh, to all the other things that you need to do to make sure you're getting good sleep. So that's one uh, that I definitely talk about. Um, we talked about the B vitamins, um, and there's just, um, as I said, they're important in so many chemical reactions in the body that I think that those are, those are ones that we test for, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. And the other one that, um, that is commonly uh, prescribed that I use uh, personally and prescribe to my patients is fish oil supplements. Uh, you know, not a lot of us eat um, fish oils that are high in DHA and EPA, those essential fatty acids that are important for building cell membranes, building ner uh, nerve tissue. Um, we, we don't get that, that kind of natural um, uh, rich food sources that we used to do. So I, I supplement with a high quality fish oil supplement uh, and there's specific ones that, um, that, I'll, that I recommend to my patients because there's a lot of fish oil supplements out there that, um, that you need to just be cautious of and we'll talk about that in a minute. So I want to talk about two patients. Uh, one is a guy in his 50s that came to me, just was healthy guy, has been basically doing, you know, the normal stuff and, and healthy living, eating well, exercising, uh, doing all the things that he normally should do. So we, as part of my evaluation at Dignity Integrative uh, Health and Wellness, we do kind of standard baseline testing if your primary care physician hasn't done it. Uh, and one of them is a uh, integrative functional medicine test uh, from Genova that looks at all of the biochemical processes that you do, that you have in your body and how all of those essential vitamins and minerals are kind of acting in your body. And it's a great um, test to say, oh, okay, well, we can check a blood level of something, but is your body able to use it as you should use it? And we found with this particular individual that his B vitamins were really, really low. And specifically his B12 level was very low, which was odd uh, because that person was me. <laughs> and, and I was actually shocked to see that my B vitamin levels were so low. It relates to something that some people have, very common um, uh, genetic variant called MTHFR, which I'm not gonna get into here. Um, and I noticed when I start taking uh, methylated B vitamins, which is a particular type of B vitamin supplement, um, within a few days to a week, I noticed a pretty significant change in my energy level, uh, in a little bit of my mental clarity. And, you know, that could be what's called the placebo effect. When you take something, you expect an outcome. But I've taken supplements for a while uh, and this was actually a noticeable change for me. So I thought that that was really interesting that someone is trying to stay healthy. When I actually looked at those fun functional medicine testing, it was like, wow, you're really low in B vitamins. And lo and behold, I actually felt better and I'm continuing to take those. The second one is a woman in her mid 50s that came to me with kind of fatigue and difficulty sleeping and really just not having energy during the day. 
Uh, and I checked uh, my baseline labs that we do at Dignity Integrative, and I noticed her B12 level was actually lower, like in like almost in the abnormal range. Um, and when I did her functional medicine testing, she was off the chart low. Um, so we know that B12 specifically for people that have B12 puts you at risk for, for chronic fatigue, for mild depression, for a lot of the things that most doctors know about. But it just goes to show you that sometimes even good doctors can miss things. Uh, and we take a very structured, uh, methodical approach in, in our practice to make sure, number one, we've established the baseline and then test for the things that you need to, as opposed to just not prescribing things that you may or may not need. Um, so that was, that was the second patient that I thought was really interesting. And she's now being supplemented. She's starting to feel better. These, these take several months to really work. It's not like you're taking uh, an antibiotic and two days later you feel better or you don't feel better. Um, it takes months for you to get build, build those stores back up in your body. So um, I mentioned that there were certain classes of supplements that you need to be careful of. Uh, and the, those fall along the lines of three things. The one, the first is uh, anything that says it's going to enhance your sexual function. Those are areas that you need to be worried about. The second one is weight loss uh, supplements that are advertised as weight loss supplements. And the third are those that say they're going to build muscle mass. So uh, sexual enhancement supplements, uh, weight loss supplements, and ones that are going to enhance your, your muscle mass. Those three classes that's not to say there aren't good ones out there. Those three classes are the ones that you need to be most careful about uh, having some issues with manufacturing. So those are, are definitely something that you, you just need to be cautious about if you're taking those, making sure they have uh, the consumer labs or, um, or U.S. Pharmacopeia stamp of approval on it that they've been tested and they are what they say they are. So where do you get supplements? Where do you buy them? There's lots of different places that you can buy supplements. Um, certainly health food stores are, are where I direct some of my patients. There are some great national organizations. One's Emerson Ecologics, Emerson Ecologics also known as Wellevate. Uh, it's a supplement company that uh, just basically uh, supplies supplements from many different manufacturers and they do their own testing and they kind of uh, approve, give their seal, their separate seal of approval to make sure that the, they're, they are what they say they are. Amazon is fine if that's where you want to find them. Just be careful because there's been a lot of issues, not a lot, but there's been more issues than certainly the companies that are just designated to do that work because um, you never know who's selling on Amazon. I mean, a lot of times they're fine and it's not a problem, but every once in a while you're going to get, uh, you're going to get surprised. And when you're talking about stuff that you're putting in your own body, I'd want to get it from a reputable, um, reputable manufacturer. And they have their own websites that you can go to. Um, so that's where uh, I, I kind of send my uh, patients to either a local health food store that has someone knowledgeable about the supplements or definitely through, um, uh, definitely through Emerson Ecologics. It's one of the more well-known ones. One of the other websites people should know about is called MyTavin, M-Y-T-A-V-I-N. It's kind of a combination of my and vitamins squished together, M-Y-T-A-V-I-N. It, it's a website dot com. It's a website uh, uh, developed by uh, Dr. Jeff Glad. He's a he's a functional medicine internal medicine doctor, um, and he's done a really great thing. He's basically developed a website where you can punch in your medicines that you're actually taking, and it'll tell you using evidence based literature what are the potential uh, vitamins or minerals that you may have impacted because you're taking that particular medication. So it tells you, hey, if you're going to think about supplementing yourself these are the ones that you should really look at. So I would encourage folks to just check it out, punch in you know, the medication if you're on it, uh, and it'll basically come up with some recommendations on what you need to be concerned about. So I thought it's a really great website. And there's no charge to be on it, it's, it's open access. Um, so we talked about um, supplements, uh, how they're regulated at the federal level. Uh, we talked about you know, what people should take different types of individuals that should take supplements or think about taking supplements. Uh, the ones that commonly, that I personally either take or prescribe uh, and how I evaluate that in my patients. 
Uh, and we also talked about kind of where you can find uh, your particular uh, supplements and safe places uh, to go and ones to really be concerned about. Um, so if this is helpful, great. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone is having a wonderful summer and uh, enjoying this beautiful weather wherever you are. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and until we talk again, uh, be well. Take care.